The first day of my Singapore trip didn't start off looking all that great. It was rainy out, and there's been news of late season tropical storms brewing in neighboring southern Malaysian states. So at first I thought this was going to be a pretty miserable trip. But as luck would have it, the rain cleared up, the sun came out, and all I had to combat was muggy heat for the rest of the trip. And once I saw the first signs of the city approaching from the south, I knew it was going to be an adventure. And Singapore is no joke. It may be small, but it packs quite a wallop. The buildings are designed by many of the world's top architects, and this tiny island nation has led the pack in a recent push on building with a focus on a healthy balance between environmental sustainability and sheer opulence. But that's not the only structural offering here. The history and culture play a pretty big role in the country's efforts to maintain solidarity with its roots while still embracing the rest of the world's fervent charge into the future. But I'll do an entire day of city walking tomorrow. For today, I'm checking into the cozy Shop House Hostel on Arab Street, and then it's off to grab a bite and replenish the reserves from the long train ride. Luckily, right across the street was a great place. So, um, here I am at uh, Cafe Le Carre. It's uh, right on Arab Street in Little India, and I've ordered uh, what they have like, um, it's basically a half a chicken, and it's got no chili whatsoever. It has all natural Middle Eastern ingredients, and the, the rice is actually saffron rice. Uh, it's all, all natural ingredients as well, and they've got like a bit of salad and, and some, it's just called a brown sauce, right? And all of it together is uh, 12 Singaporean dollars, so uh, I'll try it and report from there on. Oh, it's really good. It's very bold. It's got such a robust flavor. Let me try the rice as well. Oh yeah, it's very smooth. It's not expected. So I'm gonna put some lemon on it. I give it four stars. All right, so I've just finished, and this lovely lady, Fatma, uh, the wife of the owner of the, the place, is yeah. going to do me the wonderful honor of helping me wash my hands. So what they what they do in the culture is is to eat. It's customary to eat with your hands. So afterwards, they leave this on the table so that you can wash your hands, and your mouth, <laughs> and dry off. One of the interesting things that I learned that Fatima told me is about four years ago they lost their famed chef who worked at the Sheridan in Cairo for about 26 years and left them with some amazing recipes, one of which is this one. Uh, one of which was the baba ganoush with um, meze is what it's called. Meze butter. I'll have to try that the next time I'm here. But it was splendid, absolutely gorgeous meal. And what else? So I had no idea what to expect at the indoor skydiving event at Sentosa, but I definitely didn't expect this. These guys are among a unique breed of thrill seekers. The cost actually ended up being $78 after I had purchased the accompanying video from the event. This particular group of skydivers was training for their next competition in London. I caught up with their team captain, Eliana Rodriguez, who said that the competition is fierce. 
It consists of three sessions of only 35 seconds of freefall, where each team competes for the best video of mind-blowing mid-air moves. This team, Skydive Dubai, is made up of two sections, the yellow and the black. The latter is seen here. All right, so this is Danny. Danny's going to be our, I guess I call it flight instructor, right? Yep, yep, yep. So how fast does the wind go? Uh, it depends on the body itself, uh, the weight. So what about a big fat guy like me? Ah, uh, for the first time, maybe like uh, 240. Oh, 240. 240. Yeah, it so can that's, be. that's faster than a hurricane. Yeah, okay. it can be faster. This is the world's biggest one, right? Yep, yep. What, what, is, what is the next biggest one? Where is uh, that future? I think there's something coming out, know, but, but for now we had a biggest one. But it's not yet. Oh. Alright, so what's, what should people uh, make sure they do for safety? Obviously you have a helmet and a suit. Yes, yeah, suits, helmet, covered shoes, and a safety brief. That's it. That's it. So, so anybody, and, anybody can do it? Um, seven years in a book. And 1.8, 1 1.8, 1 1.40. That's it. Sounds good. Alright, well thanks very much. Thank you. Looking forward to, Let's do it. to flying. For each skydive is like falling through the air from 12,000 to 3,000 feet. Before our adventure begins, everyone watches a few minutes of safety procedures, and then we get up to test out the theory ourselves. When we're finished, we see the instructors in action. Before each group of people go in, there's an exhibition by one of the learned trainers here. It's pretty amazing to see them go. And it honestly looks more like they're just getting a jam session in rather than giving a show to the crowd. In either case, it's got to get the blood pumping. And one thing's for sure, it was going to be pretty difficult to follow this routine with any hopes of leaving with dignity. But I'd sure try.
This is so awesome. I have uh, just arrived at the Sentosa Singapore Flyer. It's not the Sentosa, it's the Singapore Flyer. It's huge, it's unbelievably huge. It's the biggest, they call it a viewing wheel, I think. The biggest one in the world. So it's another first for me on my travels. Yay! I'm so excited. Oh my God, it's massive. Look at this. That's just the carriages. It's crazy. It's gonna be so fun. There are 28 air-conditioned capsules, each set up to hold as many guests. It originally rotated counterclockwise, but that changed in August of the same year that it was built, 2008. The first three tickets to ride this massive observation wheel sold for more than $6,000 each. There you go. Uh, okay, sorry. <laughs> Hi. Sure. She will be checking the cabins. The cabins go good. They just go sit in. Okay, great. So how long is the ride? Around half an hour. Around half an hour. Excellent. And how many people fit in there? Usually you can fit to a maximum of 28. 28? Yes. And so inside it, it stays vertical like yes. by gravity? Yes. So it's a little cylinder in there. It's like you know, um, a little bit the ball bearing. Yeah. So the center will always stay for the ball bearing. So it's yeah. again. That's smart. So I don't lose all my change. Huh? <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Sir, please. Thank you. Whoa. Once you step onto the cabin of the flyer, it almost seems like you're in a spaceship. The blinking lights never stop, and there's this very ambient music playing the entire time. Of course, the fact that you're elevated into the sky for the first 15 minutes also helps give it that leaving the earth feeling. Along the way, the views are breathtaking, but those incessant lights do get a bit annoying. It's hard to capture any decent images because the constant flickering and reflecting glare really gets into the lens. But if you put your camera down and enjoy the view, it's an extremely pleasant experience. The flyer itself stands 165 meters, or 541 feet, which is about 30 meters taller than the London Eye. That's nearly 50 stories. It's currently the tallest one in the world, though China was supposed to have finished one in 2009 that was 40 meters taller. But who really loses in a competition that affords this kind of experience? <laughs>